Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 16 of the House of Horrors. And today's guest, of course, which we've been waiting for, Nicholas Vins. <laughs> How are you? Thank you. <laughs> I'm very well. I'm very well. I'm very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks again for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, well, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, start showing a couple things here uh, while we're waiting. We got the uh, Chatterix pop here. <laughs> so definitely check Yay! that out. <laughs> Yay. I, I love that. I was, I, I can't tell you how delighted I was when I discovered that I've become a Funko Pop. Uh, that is just awesome. I mean, I was very impressed by the fact that NECA did these wonderful uh, figures of the Chatterer, in, including Chatterer 2, come to think about it. But mm -hmm. I was just over the moon when I discovered it. I, yeah. Officially a Funko Pop. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> bucket list completed. You're an actual pop. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and as I was saying earlier on, if you want to, if you want to get a signed one, I've got a very few left. Head over to nicholasvince.com. I've got a few left. I don't, you know, once they're gone, they're gone because I think, you know, it's like mm -hmm. two years since they've been released. Yeah, it must be at least two years since they were released now. I so, think so. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the there are those limited edition days. ones, so definitely, if you can get your hands on that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. And, and uh, just, uh, yes, go you're gonna uh, yeah, show my books. Oh, yes. I, I was gonna, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna go ahead. <laughs> Got uh, other people's darkness. Yes, Sorry, there's a glare. There we go. Yeah, and then what monsters what do? do? And yeah. uh, which I went ahead and put a couple of them. Um, the family tree one was pretty interesting. Uh, what inspired you to write that? You know, werewolf fan. <laughs> I am a werewolf fan. I've always been a, a werewolf fan. My favorite werewolf film is probably the Universal, the original Universal, um, with it's it's the son of the great actor who was the man of a thousand faces. Lane uh, Lane Cheney. Lane Cheney Junior. Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was saying it right. No, no, <laughs> Lange, no, you're absolutely right. There's, thank heavens you're here. Because um, <laughs> what I love about that film is it's not just a silver bullet that will kill him. It is the fact it's a silver bullet fired by somebody who loves him, mm -hmm. which I always thought was a tremendous cop-out in American Werewolf in London. I was really waiting for at the end of, you know, for Jenny Agatha to have to pull the trigger. Um, and I, you know, that to me is a far more emotionally interesting story um, that, and, and touches on so many. So that's kind of, yeah, that was the inspiration behind uh, Family Tree. Nice. And then the uh, worst day was a good one. I like that. That had a little. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, that was interesting. That was written whilst I was on a writing course. When I, I was, I used, I w for many years I left acting and I went into computers, you know, to earn money, to live. Um, and uh, when I left the company in 2012, um, they had a collection for, and they paid for a, a few days at a writing course. And, you know, we were just challenged to write a short story whilst we were there. Um, I remember reading it and sharing it with people. It's a slightly expanded version of what I wrote on that. Um, and, it, it, you know, the worst day came from something that the leader of the course happened to say when she was talking about her child being in, you know, a child was injured in an accident. And it was, you know, definitely her worst day being at their, bed, their bedside. The child was fine, but, it, you know, th that's all things that kind of the inspiration for that one. Okay. And uh, just one last question about the books. Which would you say is your favorite story that you definitely check out on the list here, do you think? I didn't, well, and you're asking me to choose amongst my children. <laughs> children, children okay. You know how many, you know, how many hours of blood, sweat, and tears there was shed over the creator and the creator. Now you you're asking them me all. to choose a favorite. <laughs> you them all through your um, head. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting because I'm starting writing, and, you know, my favorite story is always the one I'm working on at the moment. In fact, funnily enough, 
yesterday I was writing a drabble for the first time, you know, these 100 word stories. Um, I've been asked to write one or two, or in fact, three as it turns out, um, in aid of a, a charity a publication that's coming out later this year. And it, again, you know, it's like, oh, well, that's my favorite because that's the one I'm working on at the moment. <laughs> but I think, I, family that tree, yeah. I think Family Tree is a good, I mean, I've created, Family Tree is a, is a good choice, but, um, because I have actually written a screenplay for that one, uh, oh, which I want to go back to again and just expand and may, may and go over again and, and so on. Mm. So yeah, family tree is a good choice. <laughs> that would be interesting to see. I wish you luck on that. I'd be Thank interested you. in seeing yeah. that for yeah. sure. And um, we sort of answered about the werewolf movies and the other shows that inspired you. Um, did you take drama in school? Is that something you always wanted to do? You mean was I always a, a show off? An actor, um, yeah. Were you a show off? <laughs> Did you like unequiv the show off? unequivocally? Yes. Um, <laughs> always liked being the center of attention. Um, yeah, I mean, I literally from a very, very early. I mean, primary school. So we're talking five or six years old. Um, I was always involved in school plays. Did amateur dramatics through my team. You know, through my through my childhood into my teens, right up until I went to drama school, um, Mount View in North London. So yeah, always been absolutely fascinated by acting. All right. Hey, you want to go ahead and ask him anything? And I'll move on. <laughs> we'll uh, switch off here a little bit. <laughs> I noticed you won a few interesting awards. You want to tell us about your awards? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Let me try and remember them all now. So I don't, I don't want to not, um, <laughs> not quote them now. Such so, a show off. <laughs> no. I know. Well, I'm, I know. Such a show off. I can't even remember my awards. Um, <laughs> Okay, so the um, the London uh, Horror Society Award for Contribution, that was really nice. That was a few years ago now. That was because I was doing, back then it was the chatter, uh, Chattering with Nicholas Vince, but also it was a, awarded for my support of UK independent filmmakers, which I, I had the great joy of working with a lot um, since I kind of returned to acting back in 2012, 2013. Um, so that was a fun one. I liked the Texas Fright Mail one. <laughs> They're all hidden behind my green screen at the moment. Otherwise, oh, yeah. I'll, otherwise I'd show you. Um, uh, yeah, and then Liverpool Horror Club as well. Um, so those, yeah, they're, they're, it's always nice to be given these things. Um, and, and I'm always very grateful when, you know, when it happens. Um, so, yeah, but I, yeah, so I'm rather proud, proud of those. Yeah, yeah, I saw those and I was like, oh, I'm not really hurt. Well, I don't really keep up on that stuff, but I was really uh, interested in the independent horror one. I was like, that's interesting. I have to ask. <laughs> yeah, I got to watch. I watched um, out of, you know, of course, not Hellraiser or Nightbreed, mm. but I got to watch some of the ones that was on Tubi that where you just played regular characters. And I think out of those, I think Book of Monsters, I thought was probably my favorite. Yeah. You, he was the dad. He was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that is, I, and I, I'm really grateful to have worked with all the directors I've, I, I've, I've worked with at the moment. But Book of Monsters was huge fun to do. Um, but not only the, not only for the filming experience and the whole acting, it was a lovely part. I mean, playing an alcoholic father was really, and I remember <laughs> one of my favorite moments on set. Um, and it's when, you know, cause he's doing a, and this is just so true of, of kind of alcoholics in general, they lose touch. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they, yeah, and he's a, he's a man who's totally the reason his he's alcoholic is because he's lost his wife tragically mysteriously and violently and then you know he's never really recovered from this he's you know he's bringing up his daughter by himself and it's that thing, you know he he goes to the he, he wants to give his daughter the best 18th birthday possible he, unfortunately he's got to be away working so he sets up this beautiful <laughs> wonderful you know wonderful thing obviously aimed at a six year old and it, <laughs> you know yeah. and, it, and it's her reaction to it and then just you know his realization of of of, of what he, what he's done 
And I, I knew I'd nailed it because when I walked off set, two, maybe three people walked up to me who were part of the crew and just said, I think I better foot call my father. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that's what we were going for. That's what we, God, I'm trying to get myself in focus. There we are. <laughs> I think it's come back into focus. Um, yeah, so I, that's, uh, yeah. And, and, then, yeah, and then when you come back and you know after everything had happened so i don't know how many people watched this so i don't want to give away too much then you come back you open the door and you're just like what the <laughs> <laughs> when i spoke to stuart and paul stuart spark and, and, and paul the, the you know the co-writer the co-creators basically um he <laughs> said no we just want to film you saying what the fuck <laughs> Because it's so unlike you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I, I like those roles that stretch me. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the other thing about Book of Monsters as well is the whole way it was funded, which was a kind of a build your own, because they had this Kickstarter build campaign where if you were if you contributed you got to choose the monsters you got to choose certain deaths you know and, they, and i remember speaking because in those days i was doing the show um chattering with nicholas vince and they explained they literally had got this plan so that if the vote went one way the story would change i thought they were just you know it's like a slot machine things would just slot into place and depending you know you'd still get the same story and things was, but no, it was a kind of a tree thing. So it, it was kind of like a build your own adventure thing. Um, but they were lovely to work with, and it, it was uh, it was really a very very good experience. Yeah, I really That's, enjoyed that, especially at the end when you said that. I I had to chuckle at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was hoping for a sequel to that one. That was uh, yeah. That was they, 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 they've been uh, funny enough. I was chatting to them uh, last uh, weekend. Last weekend, yes, it was last weekend. We had Fright Fest in London, which is a five-day festival of horror. You know, it's a five-day film festival, horror film festival in the centre of London. And it's the biggest one we have in the UK. And uh, Stuart Spark, the director, was down. Um, and we were talking. He said, "Yeah, people keep on asking for a sequel." So, so they, you know, they're thinking about. They're trying to work out what what it is they want to do next. But yeah, they are definitely going to be making hopefully. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like all these things, you know, who knows? You know, so much has changed in the last. <laughs> yeah, years. it's like fell under my radar. I so I've never seen it until oh. like last week, and I saw it. And I was like, I really like this movie. It's actually one of the Dread Presents uh, movies that they sell. That I have all those thirty. Oh, yeah. How many there are now? Yeah, Dread Central Presents. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I also like the Killer Garden Gnomes. I think they're yes. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so and I, mean, I, mean, I think I think it was only forty thousand. It was only forty thousand, but you know, it wasn't. Oh, really? You know, it, the the budget for the film was really, 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 really low. So it really does. And there's a lot what, of practical you, effects in that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, a lot of favors were done on that film. I don't want to say, but uh, you know, uh, they they happened to luck out and uh, they took advantage of what they had at the time and what was available to them. Um, and just, you know, added in their talent. It isn't all about the equipment and it's a right. lot of talent. And it's, it's a fun film. It's just. Yeah, it is. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> say, out of all the ones I watched that was on Tubi, and because I own the Hellraiser once and I own Nightbreed. And I was like, okay, I'm not heard of these other ones. So I watched as many as I could over the week. And and watch those and I, I think book of monsters is probably my favorite besides the hellraiser and nightbreed i'm gonna have to look for that to buy i really enjoyed that one <laughs> yeah. well i think it's dark rift films i think dark is the rift website films. Films. Okay. yeah yeah I, I love their logo it's got the little tentacles coming up and down. oh really <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah, know i know the website is dark rift films i was looking at it earlier on today i definitely like to see more of your character in the second now, one because i'm at my parents house and i'll forget by the time we get home yeah absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. What were you saying? No, that, no, that's all right. Uh, that's all right. It happens. Uh, I was just saying how to see the father character develop it would be really interesting. How much of a role yeah. he would have. Yeah, yeah. I, I could, when we finished filming, I said, so what you're going to do in the next one is I think the father gets kidnapped, I think, <laughs> and they've got, and the, the girls have to try and rescue him, you know, 
Be like, no, I want to be part of the team. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, I kind of go a bit like Charlie's Angels, where you have, yeah, <laughs> it's a father making sense back that house. Or, spoiler alert, they save you, but you turn into a monster for the third part. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, there's lots of things you can do with those characters. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they said they're going to travel the world and find other monsters, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You could be the supporting father and like drive them around since they're all kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're 18, 19. I oh, mean, true. You know, I yeah, forgot. Yeah. You know, he, he treats them like they're six. But yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. 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 That but... was where my mindset was. <laughs> Bring like a first aid kit, put a band aid up where you go. Yeah. <laughs> I could just see you know these these beautiful three girls swanking into the hotel, and the father following on with just carrying huge right? of luggage. <laughs> yeah, because he's the dad. It would be yeah. fitting though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's a he was a fun character. I'd love to be <laughs> <with him. laughs> uh, But with uh, the characters like. Uh, Chatterbox and I can't remember how to pronounce. Was it Kins Kinski? Kinski. 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 I, I don't know mm. why I have problems with that. What was it like getting into all the makeup with them? Well, okay. Well, it's, it's interesting. Firstly, you call him Chatterbox, which has only happened in about the last eight or nine years. That people have started calling him Chatterbox. Oh, really? rich on IMDb, and, and 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 you and a lot of people call him Chatterbox. He's he's mostly referred to as Chatterbox now, which I always find fascinating. Um, they, yeah. So uh, the Chatterer or the chattering cenobite i think of the official credits yeah, i think i movie. called him chatterbox like um, i think that's just the name i kind of like start calling yeah no absolutely. I'm kind of, it's, it's great sorry <laughs> now to answer your question um what was it like getting into the makeup it was very different on the two of them actually because of course chatterer um the makeup what consisted of teeth going in the mouth and then the mask uh, over, sorry bald cap first then teeth going in the mouth um and then mask going on. Uh, but it wasn't actually, the only bit that was glued to me was the bald cap. The uh, mask for the Chatterer was uh, one piece and it slipped and still exists. There is a collector who still has the original mask. Uh, yeah. It doesn't travel anywhere because it goes, and the, the foam latex was about that thick when we were filming. And it's now about that thick. You know, oh, wow. But, you know, so he's got it beautifully preserved in a case. He never, you know, it's extraordinary. Um, so that I was just about an hour in the, the struggle with that. It was very difficult to hear speak and see whilst I was wearing it. Kinski was much easier to hear, speak and see, but took five hours to get in because that was, I believe it was seven pieces um, to go on. But of course, that was me sitting in a chair and not falling asleep whilst I was having it put on. But the two guys who were putting it on, they um, they, they were on their feet all the time and they were responsible for making me camera ready. So I think, you know, the kudos and the talent, you know, the, the talent for the look definitely lies with them <laughs> rather than me. Um, but so, I mean, it's a wonderful experience because it allowed me to meet such creative pe people. I think that's what I loved about doing Hellraiser and Hellbound. I mean, Hellraiser was my first ever film, so I had yeah. no idea what to expect. And, and this was just amazing as far as I was concerned. Uh, and then, you know, we make Robin Vigeon, the cinematographer and, and so on. So I think that is, for me is, it was the fun thing about what is it like to have the makeup? Well, it, just meeting all these very, very talented people, um, who contributed so much to the looks of the, of the films. And Happy. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Left, right. It's like a ping pong of questions here coming at you. <laughs> Well, we're just chattering here. That's all. Or yeah, chat, I know. Chatter. That's I was looking at my bald head and thinking ping pong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're like, gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah, they the, the like, yeah. Um, yeah how did you uh, get involved uh, with Hellraiser? Was it an agent or uh, you knew someone? No, no, I knew Clive. Or? No, I knew Clive. I'd been modeling for Clive. Clive and I had met at a party in Crouch Inn, Crouch, 
end where I had gone to drama school. It was a couple of years after I graduated, but I was still in touch. In fact, I reckon it must have been through Simon Bamford, who plays Butterball, because um, Simon was working with Clive in Clive's uh, theatre group, The Dog Company. And then uh, he and I, uh, and then Simon invited me to the party, I think, as far as I remember. It's many years ago now. Um, and uh, Clive said, hi, we're going well. And he said, would you, he said, would you model for me? And I thought, never been asked that before. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go on. Why not? I'll model for you. And at the time, he was illustrating the covers of his collections of short stories, The Books of Blood. So they published the paperback versions of the Books of Blood, but he was painting the covers for the hardback versions. Um, and you'll find you'll find my face um, on definitely. You can you can recognise me in on volume one because I'm holding up a picture of Clive and I've got a knife sticking out of the top of my head. <laughs> and then in volume four, you've got, you've got, it's definitely my face. And then there's kind of like a, a kind of a bust of me, except my, my skull's all opened out and there's syringes <laughs> dropping into my head. Um, it is still one of, it is one of my favorite portraits. Of me. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's just like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of how, and then, as I say, after meeting him and modeling for him kind of over, over the years, he said, oh, I'm making a movie. Would you be interested in being in it? Um, there is some makeup involved. Some. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Simon and I swear that he used this line on both of us. I've never really <laughs> tried to confirm this, but uh, both Simon and I swear that he, uh, Clive said to us, oh, there's some makeup involved. So, I could yeah, picture right. it. <laughs> Just uh, splash it on and you're done. There yeah. you go. The blusher. Yeah, that's it. yeah, enough blush on the side. We're good. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, super, you know, you've never done makeup before, and I don't know if the other guy had or not. So you just—it's like you want them to play, so you just like, eh, just a little bit of makeup. Yeah. <laughs> no I mean, you know, it's it. it seriously. I mean, it really became very quickly aware of what it was we were talking about because <laughs> we had to go and do our life casts. Um, you know, where they cover you with alginate and you know, that stuff. You know, when you have an impression taken at the dentist, they fill the thing with. This gooey stuff that's yeah. alginate. Yeah. And basically, they spread that over your face, and then they put plaster of Paris bandages over the over the top of it. Um, or that's how they used to. I think actually they may still use more or less even for the latex, even for the um, synthetic uh, stuff that they can use now. The basic way of getting a life cast is more or less the same. So they still, you know, uh, they, there was that whole experience. And I remember seeing the design for the chatter and thinking, yeah, this is going to be high tech. Yeah, quite extensive makeup. <laughs> hey, I'm not yeah. complaining at all. Mentioning the design, I was going to ask, like, uh, reading the script or the sides or whatever, or hearing the description or seeing it, were there any changes made to it prior to shooting, or it was all set out ready for you? No. Well, there was one, I mean, what we what you do is you do makeup tests. Obviously, particularly, I mean, they'll do makeup tests just for ordinary makeup, you know, literally for blusher and, and, and so on. They will get somebody in costume and makeup in front of the camera, uh, just to see how it looks. I'm talking you know, bigger productions. Um, obviously, for the uh, FX, special FX makeup, they have to do that. And they, um, so we did about, I think it was a couple of weeks before shooting, we had to do a makeup test. And originally, the teeth were sharp, um, as if they'd been filed down. Um, and then we did that, and then I learned about a week later, I don't know that uh, Clive didn't like those. He, it said it made him look too fish-like. You stop thinking of him as a human being um, that had had this done or done to himself. One never really knows. Um, and, uh, yeah, so they changed that so that you get the teeth, which I, I think are basically replicas of my real teeth. Uh, because as I say, the teeth fitted, you know, the, the teeth that you see are plastic teeth attached to my teeth. Um, so you, 
it's me chattering the teeth. So, you know, the movement, there's no mechanics or anything involved uh, in that. It's, you know, it's it's me. I do all the chattering. Yeah. I can't. Oh, okay. People always ask me. I am immediately thinking, "Oh yeah, my muscles are all seized up. I've got old. I can't do it anymore." Um, yeah, that probably worked out your jaw a lot. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, I, I did practice in front of the bathroom mirror. <laughs> I'm my teeth. Just saying, I can't do this. Um, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so they changed that. That was the major. That was the major change. And uh, working on uh, Nightbreed also, um, Simon is in it, of course, and Doug. Mm. So it was pretty much like a Hellraiser reunion there, kind of. Did you know they were going to be in it? or were you, Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had a time we, or oh, you yeah. were all... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all knew. We, we kind of became Clive's you know, little troop of players. But not only that, Robin Vision, who, as I say, cinematographer on the first, on the Hellraiser and Hellbound, was on Nightbreed as well. And of many of the... And obviously... The image animation who were responsible for all the makeups, it was the same, it was mostly the same makeup artist that we'd worked with there. So, I mean, I, basically, we got to make, and you know, in the space of about three years, I got to make three films um, with Clive. Um, either, well, Clive obviously directed Hellraiser and Nightbreed, but only produced Hellbound. Um, so, yeah, it, it kind of became this happy band of players uh, which was wonderful it was great I mean, there was the the wonderful moment i remember the sound designer or the sound engineer on the three films john Mid midgley walking up to me when i was dressed as as kinsky and introducing himself saying hi i'm, I'm john i'm the sound guy i said john i know exactly who you are you obviously don't recognize me and who can blame you because uh, you know I don't. I doubt if John had ever really seen me out of makeup. Anyway, and at that stage, I was dressed as Kingsky, so it was like, yeah, yeah, very, very lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was an interesting movie and pretty much like a message at the time how people were like scared of something different and just because and they weren't the evil ones in there, the humans were. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, it's interesting. I've got a quote from Clive because uh, I went um, a couple of years ago. I put together a show called I Am Monsters, which is all about me getting into watching horror films and creating Chashra and Night in the Nightbreed and, and, and so on, a kind of biographical show. Uh, and Clive was incredibly supportive of this. And I remember, you know, particularly in terms of thinking of monsters and in terms of thinking of Hellraiser, of a uh, Nightbreed. Um, I remember talking to Clive, and, he's, and this is a direct quote from Clive, but it's not being published. It's not that the demon is different, it's that difference is the demon. And I, I think, you know, this is the kind of encapsulates the whole of Nightbreed is the fact that. Yeah, um, we, we 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 just got to stop judging people on their appearances and you know and and their beliefs and all the other things that make us think that we are separate from one another because it's a we live on a tiny tiny spinning ball of rock as far as I'm concerned. Um, really hard to see it when you're close up. Really hard to see when you're close up, but you know just I think. Remember, I'm old enough to remember the moon landings and watch them on TV when they actually happened. And, but most importantly, we got to see the earth from the moon, and you just saw this floating blue semicircle of a ball. Um, from and I'll never forget that, and just thinking, oh wow, yeah, it's. The Earth is really very, very small uh, in com when you when you look at it from the correct perspective. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I love I love Nightmare. I love Cabal. I think it's, it's some of Clive. I love the way Clive. I love the way Clive writes. Obviously, um, but I love the writing in Cabal particularly. And I think it's such an important book and such an important film. Yeah, I really enjoy that movie as well. 
I say I have that one in both. Or I own all the Hellraisers, and that well, except for the new new ones. That <laughs> do they count? <laughs> I, mean, I, I I don't want to. You know, I don't want to dis. Funny enough, I was talking to Paul T. Taylor, who played Pinhead in one of the most recent mm -hmm. ones, and you know what I do respect is the fact that these are actors, these are creators, they're making films, they're doing the best they can. Yeah. With, yeah. Thanks, Dimension Films. You know the limited time, the limited money, and the, 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 the yeah, just yeah. I didn't yeah. like. Uh, well, I've saw Judgment. I didn't really like it, especially like the trough scene. As like that, that was like yeah. uh, that's what turned me off, and I really yeah. didn't like it. Yeah, but I did like the Cinebite, the one that did the interviewing. Um, I don't yes. remember what his name because it's been forever since I've seen it. Yeah, I yeah. Did no, like I that's yeah. like that's about the only thing I really liked about that movie, and I never saw the other one, so I can't say if I like or dislike that <laughs> mm -hmm. one. I've never saw that one, but yeah, that one Cinnabite that does the interviewing—I don't know—he just had like a sarcastic, like yeah, funny enough, feeling. Gary, yeah, that, which is I believe is played by Gary Tunnicliffe, who uh, funny enough took over to creating Pinhead makeups uh, with Doug. He took over from Jeff Portis. Uh, creating the and um, Gary is a very talented director and, and still making films, um, and I believe Gary plays that character. We can't remember the name. <laughs> it's, not, it's not something or obvious like the interrogator. It's but it's something like it. Like, yeah, but yeah, I really did like him. But other than that, uh, I was just like, but yeah, yeah I know what you mean about the trough scene. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, oh, I, I, I'm that with you made there. Me gag and it kind of put me off and... Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when you do the, since you've played both regular movies and played monsters, mm. do you like playing monsters more? Or do you like playing the regular people more? It's a very good question because I think the real secret is that everyone is a hero to themselves. So even monsters believe they are the hero because we all believe we're right. the hero of our own story. Um, and I think that, you know that is what is the interesting thing is when you are playing a monster is how do you find the humanity in them? Even as I say, Chatterer Clive wanted to make sure people really understood he's a human. At the end of the day, the Cenobites were human, even if they're not now. Right. Um, but actually, in many ways, still are very, very human. Um, they're all, you know, they're, they're just extensions of different parts of pe people's personalities. So, which do I prefer playing? Well, it's you know, it's nice not to have to wonder around, <laughs> hear, speak, and see. And it, you know, there is a lot right. of process. I haven't had a chance to do um, proper prosthetic makeup again. I'm always scared they're going to ask me to shave my beard off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know I've got really attached to my beard <laughs> in the last few years, and it's like weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, lots of, there's lots of parts of me that you know my face that aren't um so you know i can I can wear um uh, prosthetic makeup but yeah I, I i just like playing interesting characters i think characters that are interesting usually have a conflict within themselves and a very noticeable conflict within themselves you know um there's lots of theories on, on, on all this, but, and I'm going to explain this terribly badly, but what I mean is, you know, their, their outward appearance conflicts with their actual desires because of repression or something like that. You know, there's always, for a character to be interesting, there has to be at least two, if not more, conflicting desires or pressures put upon them in order to be... It's not like, like the dad in Book of Monsters. He's... Yeah. <laughs> So hopeless, but means so well. Yeah. You know, you, and just constantly falls short. And it's by his choice, you know, it's his choice to drink. It's and that's not to diminish the power of alcoholism, which is a disease. Right. Um, you know, and, and uh, or, or to condemn people who are going through that horrible, horrible condition. Um but you know, he decided he decided to go down that route to begin with, I think. And therefore you think. But that, you know, that's not, I think we don't, as actors, we tend not to judge the people that we are playing. And I think that's a thoroughly healthy thing to do. A couple of the guests on the Chattering Hour 
have brought up the fact that they find that they're uncomfortable with the idea that only gay people can play, play gay people, um, only transgender people can play transgender people. Um, I, I understand the need to expand the pool of people who can play, and you know, a transgender person can bring an awful lot more to a part, a particular part of the tran transgender experience, if that's what they're saying. But the danger of that, as far as I'm concerned, is that at the same time, you're also saying you can only play transgender people. Right. And yeah. that isn't right, you know, and that and that's not healthy as far as I'm concerned. Um Yeah, I totally agree with yeah, that. Yeah, and therefore in the in the same way that you know a, a, a cisgendered person should be able to play a trans and it's good for them to do that. And I think it's good for the audience as well to know, you know, when I'm thinking <laughs> yeah, they should cast for like who's good for the role not who's like yeah like, like literally like i guess i don't know if i'm not gonna word it right but well, like style sexuality whatever i mean I, I mean i get it i know if you think of um uh oh god i can't even begin to think uh susie wong um uh, uh, oh. It'll come to me a little bit. That there's a wonderful film uh, made in the like, 19. Uh, Kurt Russell. Was it Kurt Russell? I believe it. I think I can't remember who was in it. I, it it'll, I can picture the poster so well. It's about drag queens driving across America. Oh, yeah. Um, Chu Ch Wong Fu, thanks for everything. Yes. <laughs> it, it was, uh, Wesley, Fu, thank you. Yes. Wesley yes. Snipes, Patrick Swayze, and. Um, I forget the other guy's name. Uh, yeah, who did, does the voice of sit, uh, the sloth in uh, Ice Age? Uh, yes, yes, yes. A very, very. Like Yeah. Yes, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I. It would be different if, and now you might actually get a big budget movie where you have real life drag queens playing the parts. Um, but I think those actors did incredible jobs with it. I mean, sometimes you feel a little, but you know, Patrick Swayze is such an such a brave choice at that time to do those parts. And even Wesley um, Snipes, I never really thought I've seen no, him do that. No, no, I mean, they were all great. Well, but. you, you know, they, they do. You know, they they commit to it. Uh, I mean, I'm a little uncomfortable with some of it now, and you look at it and it's very, very much of its time, but you have to put it in the place of its time. And that was an incredibly brave thing to do, and I think a life-enhancing thing for drag queens. I mean, I'm not a drag queen myself, so I don't want to put words into people's mouths, but I think, right. I think it helped bring things out, you know, more in whose dog is barking. It's your, I love it. It's like woof, woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, outside. Yeah. Yeah. Bertie does the same with She has to be in the room with me, and she's looking out the window. Yeah. Barking, and there's some other dogs barking outside. Yeah. 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 We have that. Anyway, so, so yeah, what well, I, I think. It's, it, it's you know times have moved on and I think we're a lot more enlightened now there are a lot more opportunities which is as they should be um but as I said I'm, I'm always nervous about just saying okay because you are a you can only play, play a mm -hmm. and that's kind of against the whole idea of being an actor and I think it's good because I think by saying that you're also saying you're a human being who believes you know, therefore you cannot change therefore you can't do this is your experience and this is this is the way you are you've got to fit into this little box and this is and i think those attitudes can be unhealthy yeah i think you know there's strong arguments on both sides and i really don't want to say that you know i'm speaking on behalf of drag queens because i certainly am not yeah, no, I see I not too long ago uh, that uh, if Elvira ever decides to like retire, are you sorry? I got distracted by this. She's yeah. all the way up in the window. 
Oh, right. Yes. So you were saying if Elvira ever yeah, decides- if she decides to retire, she was considering having a drag queen take her place, and oh, she's so prominent right. with the drag queen. Yeah, of course. I, talk. I think you know it's not like surprising at all that she would no. go. With that. And some of them, yeah. they have like they've. I've seen some of their cosplays and whatnot, and some of them do so well with that. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be interesting and good for the. Yeah pick somebody from that especially with her being so prominent with it yeah yeah i mean having said you know having said that i have many great friends who are drag queens or transvestites or transsexuals or you know um all, all 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 parts of the wonderful spectrum of sexuality and i have actually done drag once on the professional stage um and in london's west end <laughs> the Dominion Tottenham Court Road, if anybody really in the London wants to know, and they can cut and I'll explain that whole situation one day. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I've got a photograph. In fact, I'm, I have got a photograph of me somewhere of me and drag. The, the frightening thing is that once I was made up with drag with two blonde wigs over on the top of me and wearing a bassinet and a fur coat and so, and, and uh, um, fishnet stockings and high heels and uh, and so on i still look like margaret thatcher <laughs> <laughs> horrifying in so many levels <laughs> well you can play her in the autobiography or the no no no, no although funnily enough I was talking about um, the uh, the uh, the makeup artists on the Nightbreed. Um, sorry, I, I, I'm not sleeping terribly well at the moment, and therefore the brain is going. Um, but one of the makeup artists who made up Kinski went on to win an Oscar for the makeup on uh, Iron Lady for creating Margaret Thatcher. So. Um, in fact, he's got two Oscars now uh, for his makeup, and the name is entirely gone. And I do apologise. <laughs> it, it's it's old age, as far as I'm concerned, and tiredness. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I the will tiredness I, definitely get you. But yeah, I, I know yeah. what you're saying. I had a bad fall of I think last year, and it's just, ever since then my memory is just shot. I have I have to keep notes everywhere. And it oh, is oh, yeah. horrible. Yeah. No. <laughs> unless it, unless you see me write, if you tell me something, unless you see me write it down, assume I've forgotten. Yeah. Uh, that's genuinely the better play. You know, that is genuinely. I've had the best to do that. Play. Yeah. It's like, I never, I, my memory was like, eh, okay. It wasn't like perfect. But after my head injury, you might as well forget it. It's just, it's done. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was, in fact, I was walking along the street with a friend of mine the other day and he told me something. And I immediately got my phone out and started talking into my phone. He's, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing I'm making a note. <laughs> Gotta be done. I don't remember. Yeah, well, like you seen me earlier. I wrote down that uh, whatever we was talking about. I was like, I got to make a note. Oh, where oh, yeah. that website was. It's like I yeah. got to make a note of this because I'll forget. Because yeah, so yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, going to well, forget. <laughs> yeah, and anyway, we've probably drifted off topic. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's We're all right. We just that. talk here. It doesn't. It's just, a, it's just a chill stream. Whatever comes up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what originally started was talking about, you know, how the characters kind of have different dimensions. Mm. It was, uh, I kind of think, uh, like, Can't Kill This almost kind of touches that on that, too. It's like, people are, like, they're one way, like, your character was just, like, this mean, like, I I'll say mean, like, uh, aggressive producer, and then when he finds out they're, like, looking for, like, the main person of the story, he's like, oh, he's like, oh, he's so nice. <laughs> but, you know, everybody has kind of, like, that two sides yeah. to him. But yeah. It, yeah. And it kind of touches that with almost every character. It's like, they're one way, but once they find out they're looking for this main character, I don't want to give too much away because somebody wants to see it. I hate spoiling movies, but it's like as soon as they find out about the the character they're looking for, they're you know they're a completely different person. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We all have conflicting demands yeah. and desires. That's just called being human, basically. Right. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to watch Black Gloves. 
that looked interesting as well. It is. It, it's 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 one of Laurie Brewster's films, um, and, and it's fun. I've got a small part in that, um, playing an uncle. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, so Uncle Edward. Edward. No, yes, I'm glad, yeah, Uncle Ed, and Uncle Edward. That's, the, Laurie Brewster is really interesting uh, director. He writes with his partner Sarah. Uh, sorry, he directs and his partner Sarah Daly. Um, and this is Hex Media. We're talking about. Um, they do some very interesting, uh, very interesting films. They just uh, they managed to do a dragon fantasy film over lockdown. I wasn't part of that <laughs> one. I just, I'm seeing them again in a couple of weeks. In fact, I must email them during the week and decide what to do um yeah it's it's um really interesting film a uh, very interesting film I, I watched the trailer at least but i said we starting to hurry up and get ready for the week because we had to go to my parents house and it's like different state to where we live so i didn't have time right to right right right, but, right 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 but i watched the trailer and almost remind me just from the trailer, but it's probably totally different, but almost remind me of a uh, black swan a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because it's ballet. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And just yeah. like with some of the lighting and whatnot from the trailer. That's oh, what it reminded stuff. me of. Uh, Laurie's stuff always looks so gorgeous. Really does look, you know, um, absolutely gorgeous. Um, that's right. My, my watch just buzzed at me and I'm, Oh, I know. Oh, that's why I'm, I have no idea why my watch just buzzed. <laughs> Does that mean? Does Check that your mean. phone. You might have a recorded message. It's reminding you of your message. Often, often it's telling me to breathe. It says even a minute's breathing. Well, I'm thinking, well, what have I? I'm sure I've been breathing. It's like I'm not a zombie. I don't need to need to be reminded to breathe. Well, that'd be great. You need that. You know, I think that is the app for every zombie. Every zombie should wear a, wear an Apple Watch, and it has an app that says, "You know, you're doing very well as passing as human. Just remember to breathe." Right? Yeah, there yeah. would be a movie there. Yeah, zombie like trying to play a human. <laughs> Zombies with Apple Watches. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. the way things are coming, the zombie apocalypse is probably next. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I kind of I remember when um, we were preparing for my short film uh the night whispered that when i wrote and directed a short film called the night whispered um craig and uh, my husband and i were out doing a um location scouting with um our friend dawson who's those stars in the film and matt who was our cinematographer um and I, there's me wandering along trying to um explain about where I want to film and you know, should we use this bit or this bit of the park or something and like, this is how I see it and this is how it's all going to work. I suddenly realize I'm walking on by myself because Craig is cheerfully explaining to the other two his plans for the zombie apocalypse, <laughs> which he's obviously gone into in a great deal of detail. Um, he knows where he's going to get a car. He knows where he's going to get food. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, Okay, you really have thought about this a lot. <laughs> and of course, when the apocalypse came, would get along great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and of course, when the apocalypse came along, our biggest problem was that we couldn't get home delivery of our of our um, supermarket goods. So I had to go you know, mask up and get and queue up to go to the supermarket. Um, my husband got aggravated with me because his stockpile, we have like a deep freezer and I was getting like a bunch of meat and like stockpile and like the cabinet's full and he's like why are we spending so much groceries each week? It's like, well we need to have this back up here <laughs> It's the fact that it's the fact, and I think, I don't know if I haven't over there, I haven't over here Toilet paper. Everyone just ran out of toilet paper. It's like, I was like, it's like, like uh, diarrhea is not a. Is nothing to. Do. It's no right. Exactly. It's this? like are they having to go to the bathroom? There was yeah, actually we never yeah. had more than like one extra like package. We didn't like go all that that yeah. out, but yeah, I was like making sure. It's like okay, we always gotta have at least so much backup of this. this I think we've been lucky, and I like, managed to get a six. People really don't need to know the number of toilet rolls I've been in the lockdown. This is not life enhancing information. <laughs> it was so funny though. They they had um this guy who was talking about the toilet paper and the like how many times he goes, This is the average person. And he's like, So to crap this many times, like, why do you need that, that toilet paper that lasts a life? <laughs> and then another meme had a picture, someone had toilet paper, I guess it was in their window, and they were like, This dumb bitch wants to get robbed. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, there were some funny things going on. It's just, it was so silly. Human beings are just stupid. Yeah. I mean, why would you not want to stock up on food, water, whatever, but toilet paper? <laughs> It, it still must be kind of like in people's mind of like the shortage or whatnot because my son started school last week <coughs> and like on his second day of school I was taking him there and somebody had TP'd some of the trees around the school but they only did one roll per tree <laughs> 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 so it was like the laziest TP tree I've ever saw it's like they just like pew, went to another tree pew <laughs> <laughs> and saving it for later just like, no it would have been funny if a teacher came out and like i'm gonna save this <laughs> and roll it up, you know? but yeah i saw i said to my son i was like look at that that's the laziest tp tree i ever saw <laughs> oh. <laughs> and nobody was out there cleaning it up so uh, obviously it was still like that or whatever you know they didn't like there was if someone was out there like picking it up or something i'd think different but there was like literally nobody out by any of the trees <laughs> so that's just like the way it was yeah yeah well this yeah. is the this is the kind of shit we talk about on our side <laughs> 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 it's unusual yeah <laughs> Almost uh, quite literally. <laughs> but you know, um, you one of your short films, you want to tell us about the other ones you've done? Yeah, sure. Um, so, and that reminds me, I really need to get them up on. I was thinking the other day, I really should put them up on YouTube. So, there are three films. Uh, the Night Whispered is the first one. Uh, then I did a couple in uh, Ireland with uh, my mates at Celtic Badger. Um, Paddy, Aaron, and uh, Baron, Barry, and the rest of the gang. Um, and uh, those uh, with, did through a Kickstarter. Um, sorry, my beautiful, my wonderful husband just gave me a glass of water. Um, <laughs> is it just run, run out of water? It's just like, oh, okay. Um, I know I'm running low myself. Uh, I'm yeah, yeah. By yeah. Myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, and uh, mind is completely blown. Have you got the names of my short films up in front of you by any chance? No, but I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been more subtle. I could have actually just brought up my website. I know they're on there. <sighs> yeah, actually, nicholasvince.com is a far better idea. Uh, um, Vault of the Macabre presents The Witching Hour. Uh, no, 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 that's something else. That's not me. Oh, am um, I looking at the wrong one? Oh, near, I'm looking at the wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. That's that's absolutely fine. Um, so, this is me having, uh, you know, my my my. Uh, oh, the night was your appra your appraisal and necessary evils. I knew there was a good reason for having a website, just so I can remember <laughs> what I've done. Um, yeah, so we did your appraisal and um, necessary evils, um, which is short, you know, fun, short horror films, really. And again, just worked with some really talented people and was supported by some amazing people on the Kickstarter who, you know, since become good friends. Um, I'm very lucky. I really am very lucky in the terms of the people. Um, I, I, see, I, I use the word fan, and then I'm at the back of my mind um, is Clark Barker's voice saying that he doesn't like the word fan because it's short for for fanatic, um, which is rather dismissive. He always prefers the word enthusiasts for his work. Um, you know, he likes meeting the enthusiasts for his work. <laughs> I'm very lucky to have met some wonderful, you know, like yourselves, enthusiasts for the work. Um, so yeah, so yeah, uh, three films. Um, you, I don't think you can watch them anywhere at the moment um, because I took them off the website <laughs> uh, for various reasons. And I really should get around. Thank you for reminding me. For um, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I can't take a note right this time. <laughs> I have, but I thought about it before. Where's your husband? Think, Tell him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, he's, I'm, he's my backup brain anyway. I, <laughs> I kind of figured it. I figured he was kind of like me. That's yeah. why I'm like, go to <laughs> Yeah, backup brain. Craig is definitely my backup brain. And get him on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I think actually I have got a note somewhere that I should do this. <laughs> I just never quite get around to doing it. 
So I guess do you have a YouTube channel or not yet? You're really put those uh, no, I have got a YouTube channel. So my YouTube <laughs> channel has got all the 130 episodes of Chattering with Nicholas Vince. The Chattering Hour, which we just published the 39th episode, um, that went live last, last Thursday. And the 40th is going to be next week before we take a hiatus. That's on the Chris Rowe Management YouTube channel because Chris is, the, is my producer um, on, on that. Um, and again, you know, that's just been a real joy, particularly over lockdown, um, chatting to these incredibly experienced and terribly, <laughs> terribly talented actors. Um, great joy of talking to Chris Sarandon, Malcolm McDowell, Tracy Lords, um, uh, Lynn Shea, um, Bruce yeah, Davis. Really nice. Yeah, <laughs> Bruce Davison, Courtney Gaines, John Franklin. I just, yeah, I, I'm not going to list all 30. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. You said it was on, though. What was the channel name that was on? It's on the Chris Rowe Management YouTube Chris channel. Chris Rowe Management. Yeah, and um, the Chattering Hour. It's called the Chattering Hour. If you Google the Chattering Hour, it'll usually come up somewhere along. Okay. The line, along the line, you know, the Chattering Hour of Nicholas Vince. Um, that's right. I'm just looking at my, because the sun's gone down. I'm going to turn on another light now. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. You, there we are. You can see my you can see my green screen behind me now. Um, <laughs> that's I look time, slightly less. Yeah. Slightly less of which is like this little bubble head <laughs> against a black screen. Oh, wait, this isn't a bubble head. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, that's a fun A little chatter bubble. That'd be fun. They should make yeah, it. No, <laughs> Just set it up in your car and it's teeth chatter when it moves. Yeah, that, I think that, yeah. Yeah, surely you can do that. I'm sure you can actually make it rock and chatter its teeth at the same time. That's mechanically possible. I'll bring it to Shark. I'll bring it to Shark Tank. There we go. That looks yeah, good. Absolutely. That's a good idea. <laughs> I got a hell of an idea for you. Really? Well, I'm yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'd probably get shot off there. I don't think they would care about that. They're like, what? Be like, no, I'm not invested. <laughs> I don't see any of them being interested in work. <laughs> oh, unfortunately. <laughs> the, um, what was it? They're outside. I think I was going to look at here. What was that one? Oh, they're outside. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, written, uh, directed by Anthony Hales. That came out a couple, uh, just before we did that. We finished filming during lockdown. Uh, we reshot shot some of my, my stuff just as lockdown was kicking off and I remember having to social distance and so I mean we, we were filming outside uh so it's an interesting movie it's it's um uh kind of based around um a, a myth you know a, a, an English folk tale um and I play um a professor who introduces this found footage movie um so that's yeah that was fun that was that was fun as another. It's a really nice, creepy, atmospheric thing, um, and I played this professor. And, and I not, then um, playing uh, the same character in another film called The Krampus Calendar, Advent Calendar. It's really mm -hmm. Krampus. I, I, they changed <laughs> the name on me. They changed the name on me, and it's and I got. I, yeah, I think there's a Krampus calendar. Um, rather than advent calendar I, I don't know um the, 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 yes sorry sorry anthony brain fried at the moment. <laughs> go to the i am if you go to imdb <laughs> or your website either of the two i blame the internet for me not having a memory it's too easy just to kind of rely on it you know it's like why do i need to remember anything i can look it up it's like you know what do i have to think i don't need to know i'll just uh look i don't need to i yeah i've got imdb that you know my website <laughs> <laughs> probably needs updating I haven't updated the biography in a while actually i was looking at the um one of the things i'm working on at the moment is the uh, london horror festival uh which they'll be announcing the which is the uk's oldest and largest festival of live performance arts. Uh, I just written the, my, cause I'm the patron. I've been the patron for the last five or six years. And uh, I was just writing my um, 
uh, introduction in, in the uh, in, in the program. Um, I'm very excited because it, it's. Have you guys ever seen horror theatre rather than horror film? Unfortunately, I have not. It's a really different experience. It's a really different experience, and I mean, the, these take place in fringe, mostly fringe venues. Though some of the theatres are, you know, like two hundred seats, um, but often they're smaller, uh, like sixty, ninety seat uh, venues. So you are. This is live horror happening with live people right in front of you, maybe five or six feet away from you, not up on the big screen. But right there in front of you, people are either telling you ghost stories or they're telling you or they're, they're performing really creepy, frightening things. Um, and I'm terribly, terribly screamish as anybody knows <laughs> me even talking about filming the short stories. Um, uh, Paddy, uh, Paddy Murphy, who is um, uh, my first AD on it and co-producer of it, he said he, said, he found it hilarious. I had written this stuff, I was directing, and I was still so involved in watching it. I go, you know, I jump when things are happening. It's just like, <laughs> you've got to be more just passionate, Nick. Um, but yeah, so that London Horror Festival, uh, that's come, that's, that'll be in the end of last couple of weeks in October. If you're in London and you really want to, and to support, you know, actors who've not, who we obviously had to cancel it last year. Um, yeah. So it's the first time for many of these. And it's really fascinating. I watched, funnily enough, at Fright Fest, which I've already mentioned, um, I went to see a film called When the Screaming Starts, which was written by and starred a guy called Ed Hartland. Now I met Ed, four or five years ago at London Horror Festival when he was doing a two-man show with one of his mates from uh, university. Uh, and I've watched his writing. Absolutely. I love his writing. And it was just like, great, I actually get to see Ed's, Ed's film now. And so, you know, London Horror Festival and the live theatre is a way for people to do really interesting um experimental stuff so if you ever have a chance to see horror theater do or support horror theater i really do recommend so yeah, the yeah i've never theater. seen any like around by me if i would have seen that I've, i pictured me like trying to see something like that <laughs> yeah I, I mean i suppose the most famous one in london is of course the woman in black um <laughs> I'm laughing because I went to see it on my own originally and discovered that I actually scream louder than a row of 16-year-old um, schoolgirls because um, <laughs> I get so lost in things. I'm such, you know, if you put something on screen or on, on theatre, I will get, that's it, it's real life. I'm not, you know, the, the, I shut out the rest of the world and so on, so I jump and leap around and so on. It's, yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> Just as long as like the actors don't like come out and like jump at you, I think I'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. I think that's part of the. <laughs> that's part I of mean, the it's not, I mean, that. It, yeah, I, I think it has happened a couple of shows, but mostly they don't need to because you 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 know there. You, I don't know if you know the expression the fourth wall. Um, that between you as the audience and the people on stage, there's this safe zone. Um, <laughs> People will break the fourth wall, obviously, but um, right. it's not like doing a haunted house. It's right. yeah, not just a series of, of, of jump scares. It is, you know, mostly we're talking, oh. usually the stuff is about an hour long. Um, and it's storytelling and uh, get a lot of one, uh, get a lot of solo shows, um, <laughs> which, uh, which are really interesting. Um, uh, our small, small cast shows but hey we've got drag queens we've got all sorts of things going on <laughs> I, I was looking I, I i know who's who's coming along and i was looking at it and just thinking wow that's you know that's great and the, of course the real shame is that we don't have anybody from overseas this year i was looking at the previous a couple of years ago we had people from italy coming across and doing their show we had a guy who's <laughs> Queen of King of Halloween in New York. Uh, was doing a wonderful, wonderful storyteller. 
a wonderful, wonderful storyteller. Um, so, you know, it was truly an international festival, but obviously this time with the travel restrictions, that's just not possible. Not possible. Yeah. But it's good to see that people are able to go into theaters again and so on. And I think it's, you know, people are hopefully will want to come out and just, it's a great way of enjoying October and really celebrating, um, you know, the spooky time of the year. So I'm really hoping that people will come out and support. I'll have to see what there is around here. Check that out. Yeah, I don't think there's, I don't, I don't, think I don't know if there's anything like that around where I live. Yeah. But yeah, just as long as, you know, cause I, I just can't, it don't matter if you're in costume or not. You cannot jump out at me. You just cannot. I will freak out. <laughs> and I just, I can't deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of always lenient about this stuff. Go, I can't do haunted houses whatsoever because I'm just, I'm horrible. <laughs> uh, I haven't been in a haunted house in a while. I need to do one this. Well, I went to not. one I that was made for kids. One, <laughs> I went to one that was made for kids. It wasn't like super kiddie. It was, uh, you know, still kind of scary, but. You know, they had the lights off. They still had kind of people jump out, but it wasn't like near as scary as some houses. And my son, I forget how old he was. He was young. He's like 16 now. Um, I would say maybe about 10 ish. And his little friend and their mom. And we went through, and the kids got scared about maybe halfway through. And they said, if you went through, like everybody got like a hot dog and like treat or whatever. So oh, the, they noticed that the kids were getting scared. So the one somebody came like from one of the rooms or whatever, and it's like you know the kids could take a break, go start eating their hot dogs wherever the tent. But if you guys want to continue, you know we'll watch the kids and you go through. So I was gonna leave. I was gonna go out, but my friends like, no, we'll keep going. I'm holding on to her for like dear life. I got Michael Myers like tracing behind me, and they wanted uh, and. and that's how I ended up because I got messed up legs. That's how I ended up like hurting my foot originally. We went through and like Leatherface comes out of this one room and he literally chases you all the way out of the building. And I did it's like a little step down. And I didn't know he went all the way out. So I, I like went to the door and I stopped. I look and he's like still full barrel coming at me. I was like turn around and I like twisted my ankle getting out of that building <laughs> and he like comes out but yeah it's just i kind of ptsd a little bit so i can't handle like people jumping out at me i was like yeah yeah i think this I, is I, I can't do that no more yeah. that was the last one i ever went to especially now i can't run <laughs> <laughs> yep yep um Let's see. We'll come up over an hour. Um, is there anything you want to tell us that uh, you're working on now, or anything we can expect coming out? Or lots of working on lots of things which I can't talk about, um, which is always the way. <laughs> yes, um, we we get that answer a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But as I think mostly, yeah, it's the London Horror Festival is is the most important thing that I um, kind of profession, you know, professionally. Um, uh, uh, you if you if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter, do not be surprised if you see an awful lot of stuff about Green Party and the eco ecology, um, and you know the environment and global warming and so on. I make no apology for this. <laughs> um, I think we, I think <laughs> seriously, folks, <laughs> climate change is real we can and must do something about it and yes that does mean having to change our lifestyles in terms of what we eat how we travel yeah we are gonna have to make some changes to the, you know um because we can't you know we are heading for hell in a handcart um otherwise um so that's actually been uh, it's been taking up i've been doing a lot of volunteering for the green party and the political party in the uk um uh, which is, i literally joined just coming up for a year ago during lockdown um so that i think that's probably what's been keeping me yeah and yeah the website the web shop if you want to purchase signed photographs signed funko pops 
um, or get shout outs for you, you know, friends for birthdays. I will, you know, record little videos for a very reasonable fee. Um, so yeah. Are you on Cameo or just do that separately? I'm not on Cameo, funnily enough. No, I, I, I should. I, there's some really weird people on Cameo. Uh, <laughs> I know. I was browsing it one day. And like, I don't know who any of these people are or why they are on there. It's not so much that. It's like Rudolph, Rudy Giuliani, I think, is on <laughs> Cameo now. I think he is. Yeah. He, he is. And he, therefore, and he. <laughs> and when I went through, I was like, it was like a bunch of people I did not recognize their name or their picture. I have no clue what they're <laughs> famous for, but I was like, nobody I saw on there was like any actors, but I didn't like try to invest too much time in it. I was just going through. It was like, who are these people? <laughs> I know. I know, I know. It's like, yeah, they're probably I, like I, TikTok I, stars or something. Well, yeah, I, I assume that they're YouTube. I, I assume that they're, they're people who are far well known in in social media, which I, you know, I don't. Even know. That's what I kind of figured. These are probably like TikTok <laughs> stars or something that I literally know nothing about. So I was like, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think that's why I, I care about. I'm out. <laughs> I, I, the only reason I became aware of Rudy Giuliani. Um, being on there was because Legal Eagle, I think, is a, the, basically the YouTuber who he is the most subscribed YouTuber who is a lawyer, who is genuinely a lawyer. I think he's called <laughs> Legal Eagle. So, and I think he managed to get Rudy Giuliani um, to uh, send him best wishes on his four millionth subscriber or something. <laughs> Obviously, having no idea who he was and Obviously, you know that this guy is very much a Democrat, unlike and very much against Trump. Um, and it's just like, and you, and you said, you know, I really kind of feel sorry for him because he really, obviously, had no idea what <laughs> was going on here. I felt kind of mean for doing this to him. Wow. Why he did it, and that's why you well, do that. Still, neither if either side of the well, I don't know what the message was, but like either side of the political party doesn't mean you can't talk to somebody. No, you know? absolutely. No, you're, yeah, and you're still yeah. say like happy birthday or congratulations. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> but it was it was kind of the irony of the of the, yeah. of the fact that poor Rudy yeah. Giuliani is because of course he's not allowed to practice law anywhere uh, at the moment. So uh, yeah, but that yeah, is I how I became a lot of politics. But uh, yeah, I know I have a lot of friends. Like, and... oh, if you're on this side, you can't talk to them. And I was like, no, I'm out. I'm not talking to you anymore. Just no, because it, somebody's it... like on one side or the other doesn't mean they're a bad person. Or... But I'm not saying that's what you're saying. I'm saying no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's like, but it's like I, I don't. You know, there are. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. You really do understand, have to understand um, the vaccine is real, the disease yeah. is real, and climate change. They're all real things. Anyone who tells you different don't know what they're talking about. And um, please really do some proper research and make sure that you're, yeah, not you and your research. family and <laughs> vulnerable people are safe, you know, just really, really safe because it's, I mean, I, of course we're going to adjust of course we're going to adapt and of course hopefully we're going to survive you know the pandemic and so on but it will happen faster if people are sensible and not scared actually just not yeah so anyway sorry party people party <laughs> political broadcast over. <sighs> i've become a little bit of a firebrand in terms of these things now because i just think oh, i think it's a little too late to be polite about these things now <laughs> I, I um i don't know if i have any more questions you or uh or any of our viewers i don't know if any of our viewers have Types in the question or anybody. And there I was a couple. Was the someone said hi. Thing. Thing. Oh, I was hi. There was something about a Ouija shark. I don't know. I was. Oh yeah, Ouija Shark Week. I don't know. He, he I don't anything. know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> I, I was just trying to glance and look down because I was trying to pay attention. We, yeah, we just keep, like. Okay. All right. So Have like, cheetah what? will view. Did someone mention Ouija Shark Week? I'm fascinated now, so have <laughs> Peter There's... will view if you're still there. Yes, which I think you might have a good stream. Um, actually, I think they may have actually signed off because they signed off for 801 yes. saying have a good stream. I think they may have left us. And, <laughs> and now it's going to keep me 
week. Oh, she must have got disconnected there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I need to go as well, so I should leave you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yes, it's been fun. <laughs> oh, she's coming back real quick. I'll let you say goodbye there. Sorry about okay. that. I tried to click the little chat thing to see what it said, and I closed <laughs> myself out of the out of everything. Oh, that happens to me all the time. This is the whole thing I do. Uh, well, thanks again so much. It was fun. So oh, I good. Thank it. you very much indeed for having <laughs> me on, and thank you for everybody indeed for watching and take and we'll care. We'll look forward yes. to your future projects. Yeah, we'll be sharing it on my page and everything, and of course it's archived, so I'll share it out for people who missed it, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but okay. thank you though. So. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much so indeed. Can thank watch you. later. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. <laughs> <Yep. I'm all. laughs> Take care. <Woo. laughs> all right, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we, you know, we got our second show. Well, that'll be you know we can discuss more stuff. Uh, Brian Bremer at uh, seven o'clock. So I'll see you then. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll go ahead and go. My aunt's downstairs. So. Uh, go ahead right. and go and yeah, we got family coming over. I thought they were coming over Monday, but apparently they're coming over today. So I gotta get my dog out of the window and <laughs> does she thinks she's a kitty cat right now. <laughs> All right. Well uh, have fun and I'll see you later. <laughs> All right, bye.